Hi, and welcome to the topic of reflective practice. Why is it reflection important in teaching in higher education? Why does it, is it important to develop ourselves as reflective practitioners? The answer is that if we are to improve our teaching, we need to critically reflect on what we do and be willing to make changes. As this quote from an Ofsted report in Sexable Colleges notes, the most distinctive characteristics of these very good teachers is that their practice is the result of careful reflection. They learn lessons each time they teach, evaluating what they do, and using these self-critical evaluations to adjust what they do next time. So what is reflection? Bowd and colleagues describe it as an activity in which people recapture their experience, think about it, mull it over and evaluate it. Johns describes it as learning through our everyday experiences towards realising our vision of desirable practice as a lived reality. It's a critical and reflective process of self-inquiry and transformation and that practitioner we desire to be. In both cases, they're talking about thinking on experiences and evaluating them. In this case, our experiences in our teaching practice. How might we reflect? Rolf and colleagues suggest we look at our experience and think about what happened. Then we un try to understand what happened and make sense of the experience. So what question? And then we learn and adapt for next time. The now what question. Graham Gibbs uses a similar cycle. Note the role of feelings in understanding what happened and the importance of planning what we do next to improve. Reflection can be at different levels. Here are some criteria for reflection. At the A grade, reflection is critical and evaluative rather than just descriptive. It shows insightful self-awareness and strong evidence of learning from the reflective process with specific plans for making changes to practice. It is important to remember that reflection is not an isolated individual process. It should happen, as Moran and Dalit suggest, as a collegiate activity with peers and students. One of the most useful ways of thinking about reflection is through Stephen Brookfield's Four Lenses. We have our own perspective to reflect upon, but we also need to reflect on the student perspective the perspective of our colleagues, and also view our reflections through the lens of the literature on learning and teaching. So this has been a brief introduction to the topic of reflective practice in teaching in higher education. You can see here the list of references. My advice for further reading would be to get the John's book or have a look at Jenny Moon's books on reflection.